Hey up! In this video, I'm going to try and answer a question that I got from someone on a comment to my videos. What they wanted to do was use Make.com to programmatically change the title and description of a YouTube video, and uh, they couldn't figure out how to do that. So I'm going to show you how it's done. Now, it's a little bit more tricksy than you'd think. So this is how we do it. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our YouTube API. If you haven't set up this app already, go and watch one of my other videos. The link of that will be in the description of this one. And what you're going to do is you're going to go into your client IDs and you're looking for your client ID and your client secret and you're going to store these. So what I'm going to do is I, I like making things dead easy for myself. I'm going to set a bunch of variables in this module here because I'm only going to need these two modules. You can actually just do it with the one, but just to show you, I'm going to set these variables. So what we're ultimately going to get is this thing called an access token. One of the simplest ways to get your access token is to go to the Google Developer Playground, which you can find at developers.google.com forward slash OAuth Playground. So in the playground, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of this list here, and you're going to go to YouTube Data API v3. Expand that and just pick the scopes that you want. You're definitely going to need that one, and you're definitely going to need the Force SSL. Um, we can add a few other ones as well if we want, and then you're going to click on Authorize APIs. It's then going to ask you to sign in, and you need to sign in with the account that is associated with your YouTube account. In my case, it's this one here. Okay, and then you're going to choose your account or your brand account, which is associated with it. So I'm going to choose this one, and then it wants access to your Google account, so you just click Allow. And you're going to get this response. If you get a 302 found, that's what you are looking for. Next, you need to click on the exchange authorization code for tokens. So just click that button. And here we are. So now what you're looking for is your access token, which is down here. And so you want to copy everything inside of those quote marks here for the access token. So that's this JSON object here. So we can just go copy and then we're going to come back to make and we are going to bob the access token into here. Great. Now we can start to set all the variables that we need for our video. So, so what you're going to need is the actual ID of the video, which you can obviously get from just copying the um, v equals bit in the URL bar. You want the bit after v equals, that's the video's actual ID. So we are going to copy that and we are going to drop that into video ID here. So let's paste that in. Now we're going to need a new title. So I've set up a, a variable called new title. This will be, uh, this is my new title. It's amazing, isn't it? And the new description is going to be, uh, this is my amazing new description for my video, okay? Uh, you can set the category ID as well. So I'm going to use 28, which is, I think, is science and technology. And you can just OK that. Now, what we're going to be then doing is passing those variables into this HTTP request module here. So the URL for the endpoint is going to be this one. It's googleapis.com slash YouTube slash v3 slash videos. And the method is going to be put because we're putting information there. You're going to need a header called authorization, and the value of that will be bearer, space, and then the auth token that you're going to pass in. Now, obviously, um, I've already set this access token here as a variable, so I am going to use that. You don't need any other headers. You will need one query string with the name of part and the value of snippet. Um, and obviously, snippet is referencing this part, which we're going to put in the JSON which I'll come to in a moment. Body type will be raw, content type will be obviously JSON, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna send the request. So um, it's basically, as you can see, it's a bunch of JSON. So we obviously open the JSON bracket here, 
The first key will be ID and its value will be the video ID, which we're obviously going to pull from this variable that we set before. And then we've got snippet, um, which is obviously got this nested information inside of it. We've got the title, which we're going to pull from the new title, which we've set in our uh, variable here. We've got the description, which we've set from the variables here. And we've got the category ID, which we've set here. So if we were to send that now, we will get a response. Make sure you make uh, you click past response equals yes, because it's so much easier to see everything. Um, but basically, if I now do that request, uh, it's going to update this video here. So we're going to change it from this is my old title with my old description and it's a little bit boring. And we're going to change that to our uh, new title, which is obviously this is my new title. It's amazing. And my new description. OK, let's run it and see what happens. So here we are back in my studio. So let's have a look. This is my new title. It's amazing, isn't it? And my description. Let's have a look at that. Just make sure it's done it. There you go. It has actually updated it. So if we were to now look at this video on YouTube, we will be able to see that it has indeed updated it. Super. That's it done. I hope that answered some of your questions. Cheers for watching and uh, ta-ra from Yorkshire.